Welcome everyone to part 4 on how to make Geometry Dash from scratch. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to finally add a menu to our game. This episode was originally going to have a lot more content in it, however it was becoming way too long, so during editing, I decided to split it into two parts. Part 5 should be coming very very shortly after the release of this video. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, let's jump right into it. So here we are as we left it off last time, and the first thing we're going to do is create a new broadcast and call it menu. There. So make sure this is when the green flag is clicked, it broadcasts menu instead of start. Now we're going to make some pretty big changes to the floor. So if we go over to the floor, the first thing we're going to do is create a new block and call it create clones. And then put create, I'm going to add an input, call it clones, and then add another label, call it clones as well. Make sure you run it without screen refresh. That way, it runs everything in this block in one frame. Now we are going to drag all of this into the define block and put the clones into the repeat loop. The advantages of this is that now we can create all of the clones of the level in one frame, as well as also making it so that it's more compact, since we are going to be doing this many times. Now this is going to be for our menu level. So I'm going to create four clones, and I'm going to set the x to 0 instead of minus 480. Now as for the costumes, I'm going to go to costumes, and I'm going to duplicate the floor, and I'm going to call it menu 1. Now I'm going to send this to the bottom. Now that's a feature which is for the Scratch Developer Extension Kit, which is made by Griffpatch and a few other people. So uh, you might not have this. However, it's not required. Then I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to turn this into a level cover for level 1. So once you are done doing that, I'm going to grab the text tone and make it fill with a nice orange color. I'm going to make the font pixel, and I'm going to write level 1. I'm going to make it much bigger. I can hold down Alt while sizing it to make it size in all directions. I'm going to move it to the center, then move the up arrow, so that way it moves the letters up. Then I'm going to control C and control V to copy paste it, send it to the back, and the second version, I'm going to make it black, like a shadow. I'm actually just going to move it up and to the left a little bit more. Nice. Now I'm going to do the same thing for level 2. I think that looks pretty nice. Now I'm going to duplicate the menu 1 again, and this time make sure it's menu 4. So now with the menu level done, we're going to go back to code, and we're going to start coding it. That way the menu is kind of like a level itself. So in the switch costume block, we're going to switch it to menu 1, and then I'm going to switch this from when green flag clicked to when I receive menu. Now we are going to make a few changes to the clone script. First of all, we can get rid of this if stop equals zero block. We're also going to remove the set y to shake block. We can keep that in here, and we don't need the show block. Those changes were mostly small optimizations. However, the big change that we made was removing the if stop equals zero block. If that was still there, the world at the menu level would not work properly. If we test this out, you can see that the menu level shows up. Next thing I think we're going to do is add some arrows to the left and to the right to switch between the levels. So to do that, we're going to create a new sprite, I'm going to paint it, and I'm going to call it something like menu buttons. Now I'm going to go ahead and import some of the buttons I made earlier. So here they are. Feel free to make your own, or if you want to, you can use my art in the Geometry Dash art project which has all of the art that you will need for this game. The link to the project is in the description below. Now let's start programming it. So the first thing we should do is go to variables, create a new variable, and call it selected level. This will keep track of which level is currently selected. We can click OK, and make sure to hide it, that way we don't see it in the game. Now when the green flag is clicked, we're going to set selected level to 1. 
So the left button is going to be the original sprite, and the right button is going to be a clone of the sprite. So we're going to first work on the original sprite. Let's go to when I receive menu. It is going to set the player X to zero. Then it is going to show itself. It is going to create a clone of itself. It is going to switch its costume to left. And it is going to go to X minus 200 and Y zero. So now for the clone, when it starts as a clone, well then we can duplicate this. It is going to switch its costume to right, and it is going to go to X200 and Y0. So if we test this out, you should see an arrow on the left and an arrow on the right. Perfect. So now to make the arrows work, I'm going to drag in a forever block under the main sprite script, and then if else block. Then in sensing, we're going to use its if touching mouse pointer. And if it is, it is going to set the size to 110%. Else, it is simply going to set the size to 100%. So now if we hover over the left button, you'll see that it gets bigger if we hover over it. This makes the buttons look much better. So the selected level variable that we created earlier, this is going to keep track which level is currently selected. So in this if else loop, we're going to drag in an if, and this time it is going to be if the mouse is down. And if it is, it is going to change the selected level by minus one. And then it is going to wait until not mouse down. This is going to prevent it from infinitely reducing selected level. Now we are going to duplicate this whole forever loop and drag it under the one I start as the clone script. Don't forget to set the change selected level by minus one to one. So now, if we want to test this out, we can go to variables and show selected level. So if we click play, you can see that when we hover over the buttons, they get slightly bigger and we can change the selected level. I think that looks pretty good. So now we want the camera to move around the menu level depending on which level is currently selected. So to do this, we're going to use a bunch of maths. However, I will explain them in a second. But first, let's drag in a change block, set this to player X. Then we're going to use some division, a subtraction, and a multiplication. Put this inside the subtraction block. Then in the first slot, we're going to drag in selected level. Then in the second slot, we're going to write minus 480. The third one, we're going to put in player X. And the third one, not third one, fourth one, uh, the final one, we're going to put in three. So now for the explanation, selected level times minus 480 is going to be to figure out what the player X is supposed to be, depending on what level is selected. Then it is going to subtract that from player X this is going to figure out how much distance there is from the player X that it's supposed to be and the actual player X. And then it is going to divide that by three. So each time this runs, it is going to advance towards the player X it is supposed to be by one third of the way there. Now you can change this number to any number you want. If you want a slower transition, you can set this to something like five. Or if you want a faster transition, you can set it to something like two. I just found three to be the number I liked best. So now if we try this out, click play, and you should see that now we are at level one. After about two seconds, it disappears. And if we switch the level to level two, the same thing happens. Now this is a really weird scratch bug. I'm not sure exactly why it happens, but we can fix that right now. All you have to do is go to floor, and instead of being X position equals x plus player x, well then we're going to round both of these numbers. So drag in two round blocks, put x position in there, and the x plus player x in there. 
And now you should see that this problem is fixed. Now there is one more bug with the background that I, to be honest, haven't found a real fix yet. If you switch from level 1 to level 2, you can see that this white hog kind of opens up in the background. Now there is a pretty good fix that makes it nearly impossible to notice. That is to switch the background to the same color as the sprite background. So to do this, all we have to do is go to the background, go to costumes, then using this fill color palette, we use the eyedropper tool to select this color. Then we move to the other background, then we switch it to bitmap, and then using the fill tool, we just fill it in. Now if you test it out, you should see that it's barely noticeable. Now that we're done with that stuff, we can go to code and hide the selected level variable. Now let's make a select button. So to do this, we're gonna go and create a new sprite, paint it. And now again, you can draw your own select button or you can use the one that I made in the Geometry Dash Art project. Again, link is in the description. So now for coding it. I'm gonna first drag in a when I receive menu block. And when it does, it is going to go to x0 and y minus 135, and it's going to show itself. When it receives start, it is going to hide. Then, when the green flag is clicked, then we're going to go to the front layer. It is going to then forever. If it is touching the mouse pointer, we then it is going to set its size to 110%, just like the arrow buttons. Else it is going to set the size to 100%. And then inside of the if then, we're going to drag in another if block. And if the mouse is down, it is going to broadcast start. So now if we try it out, you can see that it goes near the bottom of the level. And if you hover above it, it goes slightly bigger, just like the arrow buttons. And yeah, you can click it and it will broadcast start. However, you can see that we're currently playing the game on the menu level. We wanted to switch to the actual game level. So let's work on that right now. The first thing we're going to do for that is going to go to the arrow buttons and create a new short script. It is going to start when it receives start. It is going to hide itself. It is going to stop other scripts in Sprite. And then it is going to delete the clone. So broadcasts actually uh, get run by both the original sprite and the clones. So both the original sprite and the clones are both going to be doing this. So it's going to hide. It's going to stop the other scripts in sprite. So it stops the main sprite from controlling the player X. And then it's going to delete the clone. The main sprite won't do anything at this stage, but a clone will delete itself. So now if we try it out, you can see that when we click select, it starts the level, but again, we are still on the menu level. So to do that, we're going to make some changes to the floor and the enemies. Let's start with the floor. We're going to duplicate this script over here and switch it to when it receives menu to start. And then we're going to remove the bottom two blocks, the switch costume two and the create clones. Now we're going to drag in some if blocks. So let's bring in one and put an equals operator in it. Then we're going to use a selected level. And if the selected level equals one, we'll then it is going to switch the costume to the first costume of level one. Then we're going to use our custom create clones block. And we're going to create as many clones as there are costumes for our level. So as you can see, here I have seven. Now I recommend naming each one of the costumes for level one, A, A2, A3, A4, and so on. And for level two, it should be B, B2, B3, B4, and so on. 
So I'm going to quickly create a level 2. Okay, done. Now you can see I have all of the A's, which is level 1, and all of the B's, which is level 2. Now back to the code. We're going to duplicate this if block, and this time make it if selected level equals 2, and make it switch costume to the first costume of level 2. And make sure to set the create clones to the amount of costumes that you have for level 2. Now we have to make sure that the menu clones delete themselves to make way for the level. So we have to go to events, drag in a wanna receive block, set it to start, and then drag in a delete this clone block. That way, all of the menu clones receive this, delete themselves, that way there is way for the level. Now let's duplicate it and switch it to when I receive menu, so that way it deletes the level when it switches from the game to the menu. Now let's work on the enemies. We're going to delete the enemy sprite, and then we're going to duplicate the floor and rename it to enemies. Now we're going to go over to costumes and do what we did with the costumes in part 2. That was putting bars in front of all of the blocks, then deleting everything that wasn't an enemy, and then making all of the enemies slightly larger by clicking on them, holding down alt, and then making them slightly bigger. I'm not going to explain in details how to do that here, however I highly recommend you go back to part 2, go to approximately 4 minutes and 33 seconds into the video, and that is where I explain how to do what I just did. I'm going to leave a card up here in the top right of the video to link to part 2. Once you're done with that, we're going to go to the code and make a few small changes. First of all, we're going to add a set ghost effect to 100 here at the beginning and make sure that it shows instead of hides. Then this x, you can set it to minus 5. And instead of set y to shake, we're going to set y to 2. Make sure that the switch costume 2s have the right costumes selected. Delete this when I receive manuscript and remove this whole if else block. Now if we click play, ta da! You should see that the menu works. And if we click select, it starts the level. The something that's quite a big bug is that the second time you play through it, the whole level is missing. Let's go ahead and fix that very quickly. Let's go to the floor, drag in a wait block, and make it wait zero seconds. This will actually not make it wait no time, this will actually wait one frame. Let's do the same thing for the enemies. Now if we try it out, you should see that when we die, well then it restarts the level as normal. If you go back to the menu and select level 2, well then level 2 starts. Awesome! Now there's actually one more small bug that happens sometimes. When you start the menu, you can see that the player particles are still there. Now what we have to do to fix this, is if we go to the menu buttons, which are the arrow buttons, well then we are going to set stop to 1 when it receives menu, and then when it receives start, well then stop is going to be set back to 0. If we click play now, then you can see that the particles are no longer there. And that's the end of part 4. Thank you so so much for watching. In part 5, we will be making the ending of a level much better as well as adding a scoring system and making it so that different levels have different music. As I said in the beginning, it should be coming shortly after the release of this video. If you have any questions, want to share your project, or just want to hang out and chat with other scratchers, the link to my Discord server is in the description. Have a nice day, and I see you in the next video.